this video, we are going to be tackling the leak code question, minimum size sub array sum. But before we get started, somebody actually asked me a very important question down in the comments. And that is, what's the difference between an algorithm and a technique? And I think this is important because I think a lot of times people try to memorize leak code. And we are never really taught when we are doing these algorithms that there are specific patterns that we should, we should look out for. And to answer this question, an algorithm is just code, but a technique is a way we identify patterns in certain algorithms to keep us from trying to memorize leak code and trying to just memorize all these algorithms. We can apply specific patterns to specific algorithms to make our lives easier so that not only can we solve algorithms very quickly, but we can take out, take away some of the cognitive load of trying to learn all this. If we can just identify specific patterns and how to solve specific leak code questions. And the segue is very nicely because this specific leak code problem that we're going to be working on is a timeless, timeless technique called the sliding window. But how do you know if it's a sliding window or not? Well, we have words like max, sum, min, these words up at the top here. Then we have words like window, subarray, substring. If you ever see words like sum window, max subarray, min window, or max substring, max subarray, you got yourself a sliding window question. And sliding window technique is used ubiquitously and it's pretty easy to understand. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So first things first, let's just try to understand what exactly leak code wants. The title is pretty explanatory, but it's kind of confusing. Leak code says they want the minimum size subarray sum. What exactly does that actually mean? Take a look at this array down here. What numbers, what combination of numbers add up to the target? We are going to be given an array and we are going to be given a target. And if you look at this, if you look at this array, what is the least amount of numbers that we could add up to equal seven? And just by looking at it, you probably guessed four and three. There's other numbers that we can add up here, but the minimum size subarray sum is going to be two because when we add up the four and the three, it equals seven and there's, they want the size return. So it's going to be the four and the three, which is going to be two. That kind of just makes sense. We can just sort of eyeball this array and understand or we can just eyeball things and get the answer, but how exactly are we going to code an algorithm to do this? Well, there's many ways that we can do this. The first way is you could brute force it. We could just sit here all day and go through every single combination of numbers. We could go two, three, one, two. We could get, I think that that may be seven. So let's see here. Yep, that is seven. And then we have a combination that way, but we don't know if it's the actual least amount. So we'll have to also do Let's see here, uh, well, we'll have to do three, two, and this is how you brute force it. You would just have to go through every single combination with a nested for loop and try to calculate the minimum, which is going to be an astronomically expensive algorithm. But what we can do is we can do something called the sliding window. And not only is the sliding window a lot more intuitive, but it's a lot faster. So a sliding window works a little bit like this. We are going to create a window. A window is going to be formed with a for loop and a pointer. I'll show you how to do it in a second. Don't worry about the mechanics of it. We'll, we'll, talk it, we'll talk it through in the code. But what this window is going to do is it's going to do something very similar to a brute force approach. We're going to go through here. We're first, we're going to check does uh, two equal set, two does not equal seven. Then we're gonna go two plus three. Does that equal seven? No, it doesn't equal seven. We'll go one, no, that's six. Then what's going to happen is that we're going to get to seven right here. And once we actually get to a place that actually equals it, we don't exactly know if this is the best length. We still need to iterate through the rest of the elements in the array. So what's going to happen is once we actually reach seven, this window is going to slide like this. And this process is going to keep repeating itself. We're going to go ahead, we're going to slide four. So we're going to go ahead and slide over, over the four and it's going to calculate it. This is six seven, eight, nine, 10. This is definitely above seven. So 
we're going to go ahead and slide it over. And notice that every single time that these numbers go over seven, the window is going to slide that way. And this works very well because we don't have to calculate every single number. We're still doing all of these calculations, but we're not doing it in such a brute force manner. We're doing it in a more intelligent way. And what's going to happen is it's finally going to reach the end is going to reach the end of the elements in the array it's going to calculate seven and it's going to store the element as two and we're going to get the correct answer but it's kind of difficult to hash things out just in a diagram like this so let's go ahead let's hop over into vs code and let's actually code it out so we are inside of visual studio code i have made a solution class feel free to put this code inside of the program.cs if you want to but i just made a separate class to clear things up a little bit. But first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take down the leak code method and I'll leave a link down below in case you wanna take a look at it yourself. You can check the description. I'll have a link for the leak code question. And this is called minimum min sub array len. It's going to take in an integer target and it's also going to take in an integer array of nums. No surprise there. Next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take down the minimum length. Now, we can't put zero right here, and I'll explain this more as we go on. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to place an int max value, and this is the actual thing that we are going to be returning back from the uh, leak code question itself. This is the actual value that we are solving for the minimum length. The next, things that we're, the next thing that I'm about to declare is actually one of the pointers for the sliding window. And thankfully we can initialize this as zero. And also because we need to be able to calculate when to actually move the sliding window, we need a place to store it. And this is going to be called current sum. People call this cur, I'm just gonna call it current sum. And this is pretty much state that's going to determine when to move the sliding window. It's not, we're not going to actually return this. This doesn't have anything to do with the length. This is just more so state to determine when the window is actually going to move forward or uh, left or right. So next thing that we're going to do is you may have noticed that we didn't declare a right pointer. Why did we declare a left when we didn't declare a right? Well, with sliding window, you can actually declare the right within a for loop. And a for loop is almost like a pointer in itself. We got pointers going everywhere. So next thing, we're going to iterate through the whole entire array. As you probably guess, we need to iterate every single part. So we're just going to declare just a regular for loop. And next thing, we need to have we need to calculate the current sum. So each time that we iterate in this for loop, this is what counts as moving to the right. Let me go, go ahead and show you. So when we each time that we iterate, regardless, we're not always going to drag this window up. But one thing that we are always going to be doing is we are always going to be iterating forward because we need to check every single one. So just remember the for loop is going to move this forward every single time. And what we're about to be coding next, the while loop is what's going to uh, control this. That's actually going to slide the left pointer. So let's go ahead, let's go back here and I'm moving, I've got my video uh, editor showing. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, increment this and we're going to increment this with the number. And the current sum remember is the state controller. The current sum is what's going to control whether it's moving forward or whether it's moving right. And because we're moving right every single time, we're always going to be adding just like that. So next thing, here is where we need to calculate if the current sum is over the target so that we can move it up, so that we can move the actual value up. Because once we actually get that number, once again, once we go over the actual target number, we don't have what we want. So we need to move the uh, left pointer over. And first things first, if we're moving the left pointer over, that means that we've triggered a minimum length. We've obtained a minimum length. So we need to go ahead and store this. And we need to store, number one, we're going to store the minimum length. Then we're going to check the right versus the left. And this is going to be the actual length of the window. And why did we actually have to have the minimum length start at the max value? Because if we put zero here, this value is always going to be zero. So we need to go ahead and put that maximum length so that the math.min can trigger because if we put a zero for the minimum length, this math.min is never going to trigger and we're always going to get zero. And the while loop is going to trigger the 
portion of the sliding window that's going to be moving to the left. So whenever this while loop triggers, this is going to trigger the left part of the sliding window. So just remember that. And this is pretty much ubiquitous across all sliding window uh, algorithms. The while loop and this for loop, the for loop with the nested while loop is a part of almost every single sliding window problem. And here we need to decrement this. So we're going to say nums left, and then we're going to go down here and this is where we're going to increment our uh, left pointer over just like that. And let's see here, this pretty much is going to be for the, this is going to solve the bulk majority of the algorithm. Now what we need to do is we just need to return. And when we return, we're going to first check the minimum length and then we are going to check to see if the value changed at all. And if the value did not change what we're going to have. So we're going to have our max value but because we have this math.min right here, we have to have the max value. This isn't the best looking code. I wish there was another way to do this, but I checked everywhere because I hate putting ternary operators at the in return statements like this because it makes it so confusing, but I couldn't find another way in order to actually have the uh, math.min work without the max value. So if the max.value is still there, it basically means that we didn't change this at all and it's supposed to be zero, which could definitely happen. But if it did change, we're going to return the min length. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and take this here and let's go over to leak code and do our test and our submit. Let's see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, bring this over. So we're gonna go into here, go ahead. Control V, Command V, then move this over, make this look a little bit better. Let's go ahead, run the test. Looks like everything's accepted. All of our cases are accepted. Let's submit and see our time complexity. So we analyze the time complexity. Let's see, we get an N, we are good to go. And also let's make sure we're good on the memory. Our memory is constant. We have solved this leak code problem. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.